Hello friends, I'm Dr. Prashant Sharma and you're watching Medicos Hub. This is a series of four lectures on neuromuscular transmission and I'm going to discuss the normal process or mechanism involved in neuromuscular transmission. We can divide this process under three headings that is presynaptic events, then events in the synaptic cleft, then the events in the motor end plate. So the first heading is pre-synaptic events it starts with arrival of action potential at exon terminal we know that voltage gated sodium channels are involved in this and when this action potential arrives at the exon terminal then the membrane in the synaptic knob is depolarized Membrane in the synaptic knob is depolarized. When the membrane is depolarized, voltage gated calcium channels are activated, which because of which the calcium moves from the synaptic cleft into the exon terminal. This is the movement of calcium. Movement of calcium ion from the synaptic cleft into the exon terminal. Now calcium has entered into this. Now there will be calcium mediated release of neurotransmitters. How this happens? There are some membrane proteins in the vesicle. These are known as synaptobrevin. This is synapto brevin. And there are some proteins in the axonal membrane in the synaptic knob, which are known as syntaxin. So, this is syntaxin. So, synaptobrevin is VAMP. VAMP means vesicular associated membrane protein. So, it is a type of VAMP. Now, when calcium is there, calcium initiates the development of a complex that is known as snare. A complex is formed which is known as snare. So, in next step, what is going to happen? A complex is, is being formed in presence of calcium. That is calcium mediated release of neurotransmitter like acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft with the help of snare Now what is this snare? The snare is soluble NSF attachment protein 
receptor. This is snare. So the events involved are synaptobrevin and syntaxin. Synaptobrevin is in vesicle and syntaxin is in axonal membrane in button terminox are bind with the help of proteins like SNAP25. Now what is this SNAP25? It is synaptosomal associated protein. So all these form a complex which is known as snare and that snare helps in docking, priming, fusion and release of neurotransmitters. So these all events basically are involved in presynaptic events. Now we'll discuss the events occurring at synaptic cleft. events in synaptic cleft. Now as the neurotransmitters are released, there are neurotransmitters in this. These are acetylcholine molecules. So acetylcholine molecules are released. Now these acetylcholine molecules will combine with ACHR that is acetylcholine receptors. What are these? These are basically ligand gated sodium channels. So these will show conformational change only when the two molecules of acetylcholine will combine with each ACHR and as this shows conformational change then sodium will enter. So more number of ACHR involved, more quantity of sodium will enter and it will eventually result in depolarization of membrane that will be discussed in the later events. So in events, uh, events in occurring in uh, synaptic cleft involves the release of acetylcholine and it's combining with ACHR to activate it. There are some enzymes like ACHE. This is acetylcholine esterase enzyme. So this enzyme is usually bound to the basement membrane covering the sarcolemma but there are some molecules also freely moving here and there in the synaptic cleft. So this ACHE will break the acetylcholine molecules in choline and acetate. This choline is reabsorbed by the sodium dependent choline transporters. It means that sodium is also uh, sodium also shows in flux. So this is sodium dependent choline transporter that is these are symporters. Then this is mitochondria and mitochondria provides acetyl. These will form acetylcholine which is then transported into the empty vesicle. For example, this is basically empty vesicle. It is going here. Some molecules 
proteins like clathrin are associated with it it will again reform the empty vesicle will dissociate from the membrane and finally empty vesicle will be again charged with the acetylcholine molecules now during the transport of acetylcholine molecules into the vesicle H ion that is proton are transported out so vesicle associated transporter is basically a anti porter type of protein which uh, results in influx of ACH into the vesicle and efflux of H ion out of the vesicle so what are the events occurring in synaptic cleft now release of neurotransmitter like acetylcholine and two molecules of acetylcholine bind to achr that is acetylcholine receptor achr we know that it is a ligand gated sodium channel now the last that is events occurring in motor end plate so as two molecules of acetylcholine are bind to achr activation of achr results in sodium intake that will lead to depolarization of motor end plate and that will finally develop a membrane potential which may or may not activate the voltage gated sodium channels in sarcolemma these may because when it becomes significant or crosses a particular threshold then it may activate the voltage gated sodium channels and finally action potential is generated which will travel through the tubules as well as throughout the sarcolemma in the muscle fiber so these are the various events and last step we can say that as the ACH molecules are broken by ACHE ACHR inactivates and the membrane potential at motor end plate becomes normal so these are the various events occurring in the neuromuscular transmission in next video we will discuss the end plate potential and the concept of miniature end plate potential and the blockages at the presynaptic and postsynaptic level so hit the like button share and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications